여러분 안녕하십니까? 니콜라스입니다. And in today's video, I want to share with you the reason why I don't use JavaScript anymore and I haven't used it for any real project since 2017. I love JavaScript because of how powerful it is and how powerful it makes developers. Not powerful in the sense of speed. I mean powerful in the sense of how many things you can do with it. With JavaScript, we can make websites, we can make mobile applications, we can make backends with Node.js, we can even make video games among multiple other things. Now, the reason why JavaScript got so popular is because of the web. If we want to program a website, the only language we can use is JavaScript. There is literally no other choice. On the backend, in contrast, there are many choices of languages you can choose. You can make your backend in Java or C Sharp or Python or Rust or Go among many, many others. In the frontend, there is only one language to choose. There is no choice. It's like the only one. So we are forced to use it. And since the web absolutely exploded and browsers became really powerful, even in our own pockets in our smartphones, JavaScript became the language you had to learn if you wanted to be on the web. But even though we are grateful for JavaScript, we can also say that after working with it for a couple of years, you start to notice that JavaScript has some weird features, some crazy ideas and sometimes really bad design flaws. The book JavaScript, The Good Parts, says that all programming languages have their fair share of good and bad parts, but JavaScript especially has mostly bad or even awful parts. This could be because, as the book says, JavaScript is a language that was developed and released in a hurry before it could be refined. That part is factually correct. JavaScript was actually created in only 10 days. It was created by Brendan Eich for the Netscape Navigator back in 1995. When it was invented, it was expected to be used for short pieces of code. It was designed for quick uses, but it grew to a language that billion dollar companies depend on. I don't think the creator of JavaScript could have imagined how big and powerful and popular JavaScript would become. Maybe if he knew what was going to happen, he would have spent more time designing the language and maybe removing or adding a couple of features. The thing with JavaScript is that even if we now know what are the bad parts of JavaScript, we cannot just remove them from the language. JavaScript is on every browser of the world. It's been used by millions and millions of websites. If something is removed from the language, it could break a lot of websites. This is why all they do now is to update JavaScript. They want to make JavaScript better, but they can only add new features, one on top of another. So let me show you a couple of examples on what I mean when I say JavaScript is weird. By weird, I mean unpredictable. I mean not intuitive, and I mean way too permissive. JavaScript gives us too much freedom. Let's take a look at this code, for example. In JavaScript, it is perfectly legal and possible to take a number and add it to a Boolean, even though the operation makes no sense. Most languages don't allow you to do this. They will stop you and tell you that you can't do one plus true. But JavaScript does not show us an error. Instead, it tries to make that operation happen. JavaScript will take the true and it will turn it into true in binary, which is one. This is how we get the two as a result of one plus true. Now it's very nice of JavaScript to try to run the code even if we are doing something dumb. But the problem is that most of the time when that happens in your code, if you are doing one plus true in your code, it's because something went wrong. And it would be better if JavaScript told you that what you're doing logically makes no sense instead of just trying to run the code. And this is just a tiny example. JavaScript is full of these sort of quirky things. The biggest problem with JavaScript, in my opinion, is that it doesn't protect developers from our own stupidity. If we have this function that takes two numbers and return their multiplication, when we use it, all we have to do is this. The problem with JavaScript is that it will also allow us to do this, which is calling multiply without any parameters, or also, it is going to allow us to do this, 
which is calling multiply with what is for our function the wrong type. Now, most programming languages will not allow us to do this. At least they will tell us that we have to call multiply function with the right number of parameters. If we do something like this, which is using multiply with the wrong type and the wrong number of parameters, JavaScript will still try to run the code in what might result in a runtime error. Runtime errors are the worst kind of errors because they happen when your code is already running in production. They happen when your users are using your product. They are the errors that you hear from someone else, usually your boss or your team member. And when you hear about them, it's too late because the error already happened. Ideally, we would like to catch these errors before we publish our code. Like for example, if I am trying to use multiply like this, which we know is going to give me something I don't expect, I would like the language that I'm using to tell me, hey, that's stupid, what are you doing? Check yourself and try again. I would like the language to tell me this, to show me that I'm doing something that is wrong. But JavaScript won't tell me this, and the reason why is because JavaScript in our multiply function does not know what the A and B parameters are supposed to be. Nowhere in this code we communicated to JavaScript that A and B should only be numbers. Now many of these problems will be solved if we had a syntax to be able to tell to JavaScript that A and B should be a number and nothing else. Now this is when TypeScript comes in. TypeScript is a programming language that looks almost like JavaScript, but it has the syntax required to be able to explain in advance what the types of things are. If we use TypeScript, our multiply function will look like this. As you can see, the code didn't change so much, just a couple of extra things. Just by doing that, TypeScript will know that A and B should be numbers. So if we try to do something like this, we will see a big error telling us that we are doing something that we are not supposed to do. Also, TypeScript, unlike JavaScript, will not return the number 2 if we try to do 1 plus true. Instead, it will tell us that this operation does not make sense and it will show us an error. So TypeScript helps us against our own stupidity, which means that we can prevent runtime errors from happening. Because the browsers don't understand TypeScript, after we finish our TypeScript project and we check that there are no errors and no mistakes, the TypeScript compiler will compile the code to normal JavaScript. This way we can give JavaScript code to the browser, but we can be sure that in that JavaScript code we are not doing anything dumb that might make unexpected bugs to happen. So this is why I don't use JavaScript anymore and I haven't for quite some time. Migrating from JavaScript to TypeScript is incredibly simple and since I discovered TypeScript, I haven't looked back. Thanks to TypeScript, I am more productive now when I write new code and build new projects because I make less mistakes. And also, I am more confident when I have to refactor or I have to add a new feature to an older project that is built with TypeScript. I feel safe because I know TypeScript is going to protect me against myself. So if you are any kind of developer, I invite you to try TypeScript today. I invite you to learn TypeScript and I invite you to do so for free with me. We just finished recording, uploading and subtitling in Hangugo a four hour free TypeScript course. In that course, we're going to go over the beauty that is TypeScript. We're going to understand the benefits of TypeScript. I'm gonna show you how TypeScript allows us to do things like polymorphism, both in functional and object-oriented programming. And we're also going to learn how to migrate a JavaScript project into a TypeScript project as well. So please click the link below. All you have to be is a developer. If you know Java, C Sharp, JavaScript, Python, this course is absolutely for you. And if you are not a developer yet, but you want to be, I wouldn't recommend you starting with TypeScript. Actually, I will start with JavaScript because I think newbie developers have to suffer what we have suffered so they appreciate TypeScript later. If you want to learn JavaScript, then also please click the link below. And there you will find a free JavaScript course for you as well. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what do you think about TypeScript. Have you used it? Have you stopped using it? Did you go back to JavaScript after or you stayed in TypeScript forever like I did? Let me know in the comments. I'm going to be reading them right now. Thank you for watching. Stay happy. Stay free. Eat Ginji. Kamsamida. Salam heyo. See you on the next one. Bye bye.